Greg yeah. Mike. Gre Gregory Michael. Mr. G Mike. <laughs> Mr. Get Money. The Great Mystery. The <laughs> National Enquirer. <laughs> Got mustard. <laughs> Boiter! <laughs> What's up, y'all? I am Poiter. This is the Do You Podcast. I am a film producer, songwriter, content creator, but my mission for this podcast is to talk to the movers and the doers, to get some stories of their story, to find some inspiration that we can pull from and add to our missions in life. And my guest today is a great person to talk to. His name is Greg Mike. That was his voice at the beginning that you heard there. That was old audio of a time that we spent out at the Magic Fashion Trade Show. He has an interesting outlook on the world and it's helped shape his career as an artist from painting large and loud murals on city buildings to founding a creative agency that has worked with the biggest and baddest brands in the world from Facebook to Microsoft to Converse to Heineken, you name it, he's probably worked with them. And without further ado, let's keep it moving and meet our guest today, Greg Mike. Greg Mike, what's up, my man? What's up, buddy? How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm fan. I like Wonderful. that. I like that we're pretending like I, I I didn't just talk to you for three minutes, but um, it's cool. Either way, we'll get it started. <laughs> so where are you right now? Give me a give me a visual. I am uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, um, the dirty, dirty South. It's, um, if you're not familiar with where Atlanta is, it's in the southern area of North America, okay. right above Florida. And I'm sitting in ABV Studio and Gallery, which is uh, where I work out of. Um, I have my design studio here and also my painting studio. And that's your agency, and, right? Yeah, so it's an agency and gallery. So we do like all types of creative work in this space. It's a creative hub, and uh, it's also where my painting studio is where I do all my fine artwork and uh, yeah, I'm in the middle of the gallery right now, just set up having a convo with uh, Boyder. With Boyder. Well, listen, man, I, I, I appreciate you for your time. And, um, you know, before we get into it, I like, you know, the premise of the, of this podcast is to, is to kind of get in the process of, of people's, people's minds that are like making stuff happen because, I think evidence of making it happen can inspire other people to like push further with whatever their endeavors are and to uh you know maybe even start their own their own mission. So um you know let's let's start it off with uh, asking uh who you are and what do you do? Yeah, no for sure. Um I mean I my name is Greg Mike as you mentioned and you know I've been doing art uh I mean as long as I can remember, you know, um it started like really getting into like the whole street art thing with graffiti um you know just like kind of I, I i was interested in it in school you know when they start teaching you when you're super young when you say um, in school you're talking elementary or yeah 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 i remember i mean just not being able to pay attention to anything and the only time <laughs> i could focus is when i'm drawing and coloring and that's kind of where it started and then i mean it was cool but i never like really got super super hyped on it until i started doing stuff on the street and that like came with like the whole skateboarding scene and snowboarding you know i was up in connecticut and um you know that all goes hand in hand so you know i, I found out about graffiti and this was like way before the internet you know existed with with um you know people sharing stuff on social media so it was all word of mouth and you know friends of mine were like yo you should check out graffiti i'm like what is that and um yeah started really bad as every as <laughs> most most new hobbies you pick up yeah. but it's just you know fell in love with it and now you know it's like 20 plus years later doing it professionally it's kind of fully evolved it's pretty rad yeah like who were the friends that were telling you to check it out and like what what age group are we talking are you like like late teens now or uh like i think like between 10 and 12 is like when oh, dang that's that's early yeah yeah so yeah, I mean, because we were always, like, so stoked on seeing, like, all the new skate graphics that would come out on the boards. And, you know, like, all the old, like, Powell Peralta and, like, just crazy, you know, like, it's stuff you didn't see. I mean, you saw a little bit in the comic book world, but, like, you didn't see, like, or really any of that, like, sur uh, surrealistic, like, street-type stuff until, like, those graphics came out and the posters came out. And, you know, that's kind of, like... Did you go to public school? Uh, I went to both. I went to some public schools and then, you know, like other kids got into trouble and 
um, went to some private schools. <laughs> Switched it up. Was it was it because you couldn't pay attention while you were getting in trouble? Probably. I mean, it was those decisions were made by the uh, the parentals at that point. You know. Yeah, you know what? But, uh, I I had this question on, on late for later in the um like the, uh, the 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 track listing here, but I might as well get into it now. If you could, if there's like one subject this you think like schools should teach that they don't offer right now, what would it be? Um, definitely, I hear a lot of people say that you know like running a business and like doing they don't teach you how to like really run a business and do taxes and like the financial side of things. You know the stuff I mean? that like is really critical once you hit like yeah tw- twenty one years old yeah like just like you know real life shit you know they don't they don't teach you that stuff there should there should be a course called real life shit yeah no really out I the mean, gate <laughs> like like first grade <laughs> like like <laughs> I always say that like most of the stuff that I use on the daily is stuff that I learn myself you know yeah. after school it's like from just getting out there and and screwing up and you know just talking to people and getting advice from the people that have done it and your, your, you know, older, older folks. And I don't know a lot of, I mean, school's great because it teaches you about history and, you know, I studied art history and, you know, all the greats that came before us and, you know, that stuff's great, but it's like, there is a lot of like day to day stuff that you kind of just got to get out there and um, do it wrong first so that you don't do it again and figure out the right way to do it. You know, is there any of that art history that is apparent in your work your work today of course yeah um anyone specific anything specific yeah i mean uh salvador dolly like the surrealistic aspects of dolly like i was always a fan of dolly i felt like i was able to connect with his work when i was um younger because again it was like your non-traditional wacky you know um it was just super out there and there's things that you couldn't photograph or see in real life it was more Mm -hmm. imagination meets reality so that and then um you know like the surrealistic aspects of that and then like was a big fan still am like of warhol and um you know warhol's like pop colors and you know the repetitive fashion of, of his work and um you know all the way to like some of the old you know german graphic designers you know um i think i, I i'm interested in a lot of that stuff so was that stuff that you were kind of self-teaching or self-researching yourself, or did you did you get any of that in school? Um, half and half, you know. Um, like a lot of the more contemporary stuff is stuff that I learned, you know, outside of school. But um, there was a lot of like, you know, we covered a lot of that stuff, like the Warhols and and Dollies and stuff. And that was always the the most interesting stuff that I found uh, in in the college classes. Did, what what, uh, what college you go to? Uh, Florida State University. And what did you study? Um, graphic design and marketing and studio art. How old were you when you started that you could started to see that you could do this for a living? And and like what was the first thing that you got? There was an actual money transaction for your work. Um, do you, can you recall that? Well, pro- probably about like. 10 years ago, I would say, um, just like once I got out of school and I was always doing like throughout school, like I wasn't selling paintings, but I was doing a lot of like graphic work and drawings and, you know, whether it's like t-shirt designs or, or things like that. But, you know, after I got out of school, I kind of made the leap and and just went for it um, and didn't get like a traditional job. Like I was like, you know, if there's a time to do it, take the risk is now. Luckily, you know, like I was doing a lot of things in school that kind of like that kind of moved over to to the after school uh, hours. And I was working a lot like, you know, during school um, on side projects. And then so by the time it was like time to graduate, um, I had already had a bunch of stuff lined up, you know, that I was working on myself um, from like a design perspective. Um, I was still doing art, um, you know, here and there, like painting murals and the graffiti stuff. But I hadn't figured out at that time um how to like how to really from a, from an art perspective how to how to go full speed on that so it was more yeah. design on that side and then as the design stuff grew uh, it allowed me to spend more time focusing back on my art and then that's kind of where that caught up and you know in the next few years after that i asked that because i think a lot of people 
that even when they study it officially and they have like the degree that says that you know you can do this you have to like cross that that edge of of discomfort where you're you're actually selling something you make to someone else and like no one thinks they're enough like i'm not good there's enough graphic designers out there like why would they buy my version of this you know why would they buy my version of this like is there is there like a piece of advice you would give through your experience to to give someone that nudge I mean, I think like the hardest part for a lot of kids that are like in school and then like they graduate with this degree is like they don't spend their college time like working on their outside craft. Like, like, like I think that's the best. Yeah. Like while you're in school, like you should be building that while you're in school on the side, like not just going to your classes and partying and then saying, oh, I just got to get my degree and then I'm going to walk into doing what I love. Like now, like you got to hustle during school, like school's your time to like get your side hustles on whether that's like perfecting and building your art name or working on your design stuff or building a business because that's when you have the time. And like, dude, when you get out of like, when you're in school, you don't realize how much extra time you have on your hands. You think it's hard when you're studying, but come on, when you get out and you have to work a nine to five, you know, like you're you're not going to, yeah. And you're not going to have the energy at the end of the day um, versus if you're going a few classes a day and you've got time to to hang out so you know i think that was like one of the best moves that that i did was during that time at school i was like you know i was a sophomore in college and i was focusing on my crafts and building businesses and figuring out you know what i wanted to do in life and not just you know like thinking okay i'm gonna get this degree and then i'm gonna be able to transition because like the harder the older you get the harder it is to to jump off that cliff you know what yeah. i mean it's like it's like once you get a family, once you get kids, it even gets harder and harder. So like if you don't take that jump early on while you have that extra time, I think it just lessens and lessens your chances. So I mean, I guess the moral is just like in school, don't waste that time because that's like valuable time to build. And it's the perfect time to take risks and experiment because I feel like there's like when you're younger, people give you a lot of breaks. They're like, hey, you know, whatever. He was just figuring it out then, you know, and then once like you try to decide. And you're naive. You're naive. naive. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like the older you get, the more you start thinking about things and and triple, you know. Triple, double thinking, over thinking. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like I remember like even, you know, when I first started going like professional on, on my art stuff, it was like. I didn't know there were so many things like I didn't know that I feel like you learn you learn from it but it's like I probably wouldn't take those same risks at this point but those risks are the risks that allowed me to succeed yeah yeah there's something there too where it's like since you know less you're allowed to be more, you're almost more focused on what's in front of you because like once you learn more like your mind starts going this way and that but we could build that we could make this but when you're when you do have that advantage of like not knowing so much about it that you can just focus on that one or two things that are in front of you. Yeah, for sure. Um, so tell me, like, how does your day start out? I want to know, like, when do you when do you start your your creative process? Do you read a book, and what book? What what's the what's like the most recent chapter you got into? Kind of kind of break down those first three hours of your day for me. Yeah. Um. Well, it's interesting because I wear like a lot of hats with you know running you know, a design agency, creative agency, and then with my fine artwork. Yeah, how do you um, balance that? And then the gallery aspect, you know, that we run. And we do a lot of, like, different, a lot of different types of projects, whether it be, like, collaborations with brands or whether it's murals that I'm working on. So, I mean, I think it's great for me, and I like it because I'm, like, super ADD. And, like, I feel like if I'm not transitioning, I would have been bored years ago and quit and, I don't know, probably be living in Hawaii or something, surfing or snowboarding and, some mountains but uh no like uh every day is different you know i mean it's just i think the key in in what i do is organization and just staying like you know with so many different projects going on at once it's just trying to stay as organized as possible and keep them all on track um you know whether that's you know commission paintings that i have in the work or murals or design projects or uh things like that so i mean yeah usually it's it's a pretty long day getting up you know relatively early around seven and then just hit in the studio and meet with the team going over all the things that we have to do and you know what our deliverables are on all fronts and then uh so just you, charging you just get into it or do you, do you read anything is there like anything you listen to that charges you up for your? i mean music is always you know uh, if if i wasn't doing art i'd probably you know love to be pursuing a career in music but 
I was never good enough. So <laughs> I disagree. I remember, I remember some of that. <laughs> I remember there was a track that you dropped with. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In Atlanta. Yeah, um, I used to have fun, fun with it. I mean, I, yeah, like music is always inspiring, and um, you know, looking at art is inspiring, and art history, and movies, and, and film are always great for inspiration. Yeah, um, it just depends, you know. Certain different projects, you know, I have to get in a different mindset for each one of them. You know, if it's a mural, I'm gonna be in a different mindset than if I'm trying to design some fabrication structure for a, a brand collaboration at a music festival or something you know yeah. it's just like i kind of have to get in that space uh e each one's a little different so whether that's you know just doing research and and floating around on the internet or listening to music or getting out and working out and catching a jog and getting the blood flowing so so you're one of those people that you can just wake up and get after it I, mean, I need a little. I need a little bit of coffee. A little, little bit of coffee, because I. I mean, I feel like the, yo, bro. Those like first five hours of the day, where like I feel like most of the world changes. Like, like the most of like the, the most productivity, like from human beings, is able to happen in those first five hours. And if I miss like my first, like two to three, then my whole day is messed up. Like I've I've been trying to get my routine down, so I'll read a chapter. I'll I'll write yeah. a couple ideas down. I'll write a little excerpt, or you know. I'll like I'll talk to myself in the mirror for like forty five minutes. I'm just kidding, not forty five minutes, but like you know I'll do some weird shit. There's no there's no weird stuff that like you know you might be a little you know, like it's kind of not that many people know about it, but it's something that gets you amped up to to attack all these different projects. Uh, not really, man. I wish I had some crazy story nah, about something that I do. I mean, nah, I mean that that's that's a story in itself. Like yo, I just I just do work. I just make it yeah. happen. <laughs> Yeah, there's no there's no secret. I mean, it's just getting after it. I mean, just I mean, yeah. usually the morning's good for like having a peace of mind and like just planning the day because, you know, if you're kind of before it gets crazy at the studio, it's it's always a good time to kind of hit some emails and and throw out some things that you want to accomplish for the day, but um yeah, no crazy rituals. I'm not like dancing around in here with like, you know, <laughs> yeah. All right, a cool. Mickey Mouse outfit on or anything. Cool. Well, let, that, that's that's totally fine with me. I, you know, if you need a Mickey Mouse hat, I let me know. I'll send you one. Um, I do have some Mickey Mouse gloves in my car, though. But I'm sure you do. Sometimes I'll <laughs> just put those on to drive to the studio in the morning. <laughs> just to just to feel youthful and, and lively. Yeah, I mean, respects to Walt, you know. But shout out Walt for real, man. Um, I'm, I'm looking at a picture of you. Let's dig into some of the some of the stuff you've made because I'm looking at a picture of you right now on the on the phone, and you're and you got a, a paint can in hand and you're and you're writing something on a on a on a wall or you're not writing you're 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 arting you're drawing something on a what is that called a, a painting painting something on a yeah wall? I mean just painting a mural painting. where is it the one I'm on the ladder and I'm on a phone yeah 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 who are you talking to right there. That's actually funny because it's kind of full circle. That's uh, that's when I was painting the a mural for the Beebs. Uh, really? That was that was Young Braun on the phone. <laughs> he was harassing me on when it was gonna be done because you know his style. He calls the night before. <laughs> Yo, I need you to do this. He did like, not call right. you the night before. Yeah, I was like, all right, man, anything for you, buddy. How how long did it take you to paint that? Uh, that was just like a quick uh, four or five hours. Four That's hours. Four or five yeah. hours. Yeah, that was just for like a, I guess the album release that he did. So, so it, when you make that, right? Do you draw that on paper first, or is that you see that in your in your brain? How do you pick the? How do you pick that wall? Like, what's up? <laughs> um, that one was just like a, a wall that I kind of had my my eye on. That's like in our neighborhood <laughs> that has these windows that look like eyes. And I like I like like taking architecture that's already like in existence and yeah. kind of turning it into giving it like uh, you know reinventing it whatnot. But that so that that piece I always saw that driving by in my head and I was like this would be a perfect piece for this wall. They they needed something done and you know it made sense with the whole purpose thing repurposing some windows and turning yeah. it into some turning it into something else. Well, so you, that. That was just, uh, yeah, like some of that stuff, like I'll just see just driving around the city and then, you know, I'll have an idea in my head from passing a building so many times and then figure out, you're you just, know. 
You just like you how to make like, it happen. You're like you're like a like a, a building st- like creep. You're just like you're like <laughs> lurking around yeah, in like yeah. a trench coat. Like I got my eyes on. You. Yeah, my girl is always. She's always like she tells me I never shut up when I'm in the car because I'm like, damn, imagine that wall. I got that wall. I was like, you see those lifts? You see those scissor lifts over there? Damn. <laughs> at, le- at least she's. She's like, you're the only person I know that gets excited when they see a boom lift. Yeah. I'm like. <laughs> Yo, me, me, me and my girl will do that. We'll we'll look at like you know not to get all cutesy out here, but like we'll look at like like a new a new restaurant or store go up, and we'll like we'll talk about their logo for like fifteen minutes, <laughs> and like just get so excited about whether or not we like it or not. Hey, that's um, what it's all about. Yo, so so did, have you ever gotten in trouble? Like like how did you get permission to to paint on that wall after you creeped them out a little bit? Um. Well, that, like a lot of those now, like, you know, I'll reach out and talk to the owners of the buildings and they're cool uh, with me painting on them. Um, so I don't really do like a, that much illegal stuff anymore just because I'm able to <laughs> kind of make, yeah, make a call. 80-20 rule. <laughs> yeah, you got to you gotta keep it balanced. Um, yeah, a lot of it, you know, people are cool nowadays. I mean, lucky enough, like we're in a time period where street art's like super mass marketed now and people know about murals and the word graffiti is kind of you know obviously graffiti and, and bombing and is totally different than the term street art now so when people hear street art they think murals and they don't think graffiti as much so it's kind of allowed us to branding. yeah it's, it's kind of allowed us to like to be able to paint a little bit more freely and um, without getting in trouble which which helps when you when you're trying to do things legit Yo, and let's go back a little bit more because we met through Scooter, right? Mm-hmm. How did like how did did you meet Scooter in Atlanta or was that like a beforehand? Yeah, no. Um, I, well, I was running a trade show at the time. Um, I did a fashion trade show called Traffic, and that was like <laughs> me and a few of my buddies from college started that. Kind of goes back to that whole like you know businesses and. and hustle in college and uh, we started a few business in college and, and that was one of them so we had like all these brands in atlanta that were showing out of um, the old macy space downtown it's like vacant building yeah and um matt uh levine from stilo I know levine. which was his which was his hold on one second which was his brand at the time uh, brought can you hear me yeah yeah he had brought in uh scott by and we just chatted and then became friends. Oh, word, and that was, word, that word. was yeah, years, almost, years ago. I was trying to think how we met because I think he brought us through. It was like our second night when we moved to Atlanta. He brought us through to some party. And I remember it was like, it was at, I have, I have no idea where it was. It was like Tuesday nights or something. It was some like themed party that happens every <laughs> Tuesday night. And I, you know, I, I came straight from like small town Westchester and we go to this party. And I swore, I remember being like, yo. You remember the uh, the scene from the um the Foot Clan or, or from uh, Ninja Turtles when they like when like they <laughs> when like they they you see what's happening at the Foot Clan and like there's just all this yeah. crazy shit happening like I swear <laughs> we walked into the Foot Clan headquarters. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's where we met you. Yeah, it sounds about right, man. <laughs> Those are the good old days. Yeah, that that was tight, man. That that, that was a cool way to get acquainted in the Foot Clan headquarters. Yeah, and you guys had your remember your your house over there, and then I painted that uh, that mural downstairs. Where Yo, that's still Asher down Studio. there. Yeah, it's wild. That's still down there. Supposedly, some dude reached out to Ash and was like, "Hey, man, like, <laughs> there's a mural down down the basement. And, like, that's where we recorded everything." Yeah, I remember like. I went over there and he, when he asked me to paint that, I was like, sure, I'll paint a little mural in the studio. And it was like, it was like probably like 12 or one in the morning. I mean, I, I think I got there at like 6 PM and I was like still working on it. And he's like, yo, you're still going. He's like, I'm gonna go to sleep. <laughs> and he went upstairs and I was like up there to like three in the morning, locked everything up, closed it, left. And that was it. But yeah, it was just one of those late night, quick little bomb murals real quick wait i remember like did did you do that right away or do we already have that like kind of built and set up like the whole no yeah i think you had the booth set up yeah yeah 
you know, because yeah. I remember you being down there, and I didn't really know you that well, and I was just like, <laughs> just like some dude painting. It was kind of like a little, yeah, a little recon mission. I was kind of in and out. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's cool that it's still up, though. Uh, Yo, it's I saw cool. a picture online. It's cool that it's still up, and it's also, it, like, stuff like that um, at that time in my life, I don't think I really appreciated how important it is um, to bring walls to life, to bring your surroundings to life, right? It, 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 you know, if we were down there and we had nothing but those brick walls, you know, we probably would have made no, nothing fun. You know, the music would have been like, I feel like it, it helped tell our stories with the songs. that we. Were and you guys were like, you guys were like writing on the walls too. I remember there yeah. was like lyrics and funny random shit on the walls. Just nonsense. Which is cool, and that kind of goes back to that whole idea of just like, I don't know, humans' infatuation with writing on things and where graffiti developed from. You know, it's it's weird. Yeah, so it's you know, exactly. like even like even when you're a little kid, kids are infatuated with drawing on stuff with crayons and writing on their walls of their parents' house. And I don't know. So there's something about that that's like human nature. Yeah, yeah. That, that actually, I just had like a little idea in my head. That'd be so badass. To just have like an an all white like studio room where you just like let your kid play in it for like thirty minutes every day, just let them make like draw on that wall their whole entire life, <laughs> and then it's just like mural of their life. That's just me thinking out loud. I want to do like fun little things once once I have kids. Yeah, until they turn into a t- teenager and start tagging the neighborhood. Yeah, <laughs> did, I, did you ever get in trouble doing that? Um. Uh, give me, like, give me that like one time. Was there any close never, calls? Yeah, I mean, never locked, never like locked up. But you talk your way like, out of it. There's been a few times that just, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to get too too <laughs> into it, but but I, I made it out alive. You know what I mean? And I transitioned, and um, I'm in a good place now. So cool, cool. I mean, all that stuff builds you, though. You know, it builds your character. And you gotta, you gotta go through it, but. You know, it's how, how strong is your right shoulder from from holding up that thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can definitely I can definitely put up more weight on the right than the left. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did you make this? What is this? An eagle? Uh, which one? What is it? With Nicho, Nichos in Winwood. I'm, I'm gonna everything I talk about. No, no, no. Nicho. That no. Nah, that's uh, my buddy Nichos. He's uh Nichos. Yeah. Now he painted that in Miami during Art Basel. Um, all right, so yeah, he's he's insane. Let's talk about yeah. He it looks insane. Um, the, this one though, you did this one. The uh, the lions. Yeah, the lions that are looking at each other. It's like a lion and lioness. Yeah, what project was that? That was for Canvas West Palm Beach, which is um, it's a mural project in South Florida. Mm-hmm. And um. Yeah, it was done over, I think it was like four days, not too long ago, like within the last six months. And um, yeah, it's just like the story behind that is just like a guy, you know, it's obviously a male and female lion. And I think the title of that is um, True Love. And it's yes. just like, it's just like a showcase of like the passion behind relationships. You know, they look like they're going to eat each other alive, but, you know, it's really just like, passion yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and like the colors and characters just represent like the the good and, and fun and that's that's located inside you know that, that mural was like based off of an earlier one you know that's where um, it's like a uh, it's like a bear that's screaming it's called true colors it's like a single face of a bear and it just kind of like touches on the same thing that like you know don't judge a book by a cover yeah. You know, like find out what's inside because it's not always like what appears on the outside. Now, so that's kind of like an extension of that. Now, when you get this project, um, do you, do you initiate that, or did the, the people reach out to you at this point? Um, that one, yeah, that was just you know uh, that was funded by the city of West Palm Beach. Canvas is a, a charity based uh, mural project in West Palm Beach. It was actually pretty rad because after I um, spent some time till about I was 12 years old or 13, then I moved to to South Florida. So it's actually my hometown and they started a mural festival there. And 
I was uh, luckily lucky enough to be included in that. Um, and they had reached out and brought in artists from all over the world. And um, I was the only artist that had actually like, you know, lived in West Palm and now living in another city that came back to the hometown to paint. Now, like when you have that idea, did, did, did they say, hey, we want this direction? Or is that just you coming up with that? From, from No, that, you know, like all my fine art stuff, like, you know, it's all or the street stuff is, is pretty much, unless it's like a brand collaboration, it's pretty much like, I'll just go with what's on top of my, on my mind at the time. And, um, there's not really like a lot of direction that's stated, um, beforehand, you know, which is cool. Cause you know, a lot of, a lot of times, you know, people want to see sketches and it's good when people trust in what you do and just let you kind of do free reign and, and, uh, trust in your abilities to create something that's not going to be, um, you know, seen in a negative light or, you know, I think that's the main concern is just people don't want to like stand behind message. something that they don't know what the message is. It's kind of like, you know, getting to that level where people can trust you and your work and uh, just let you go for it. I mean, I'm looking at this man and it's, it's absolutely magnificent. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. it. Does that get old to hear? Like, or, 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 you know, or do you, does that even matter at this point? You know, like, like where where does it where does it come from? Like I feel like your your need to, your want to do this like just knowing you is so like pure that like it doesn't even really like is it just the cherry on top when someone says they like it as long as you're cool with it? Yeah, I mean it's always nice to get praise for things that you work hard on, but yeah. I mean at the same time you're always like trying to push it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I feel like maybe like for the first you know week or so, you know you're excited about it. And I know with me, like, I'm always like, I want to do better. Every time I want to uh -huh. do better, I want to go bigger. You know what I mean? I want to push, like, I want to push, challenge myself more and more. So, you know, you got to keep progressing. That's getting, the name of the game. Getting one, one, one to 2% better each time over 10 years allows you to get to this point where you're doing murals like this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's baby steps. You know, that's what I always say. It's like, you can't just get out there and do it you know it's like everything stems from from the experience you know the day before so I, mean, I think that's that's one thing i mean i think a lot of younger kids like it they want that like instant success and it's like that stuff doesn't come overnight you know what i mean it's like like i i mean personally i've been painting since i was 12 years old yeah you know? so you know 20 and, 20 plus years and and what people don't see are the the thousands and thousands of, of of paintings that you worked on and practiced that will never see the the public eyes like that was just like the blood sweat and tears that like the, the, that stuff's not fun to advertise the, the the pretty stuff is the stuff that's fun to advertise yeah. you know um, and they don't see that so when they don't do that right away they're they're kind of they're kind of bummed yeah there's some there's some ugly Greg Mike work <laughs> in my in, in my mom's closet in my mom's closet and it, it's somewhat scary. <laughs> uh, I, can, nah. I, I can I can imagine, man. I was actually looking at some. Uh, I found some old notebooks from <laughs> from our, from the stuff we were writing when we were in Atlanta, and I'm like, how did anything good come out of that like that time period? That, we wrote yeah. the stupid like I like one of the. Nah, I don't even got to say what it was, but it's just <laughs> stupid. Just I, I wouldn't listen to it if you like you paid me. Um, yeah. But hey, let's talk about Larry Loudmouth. Yeah, for sure. I love Larry. Larry's a good guy, man. He's a positive. He's a positive creature. He is. Yeah. What? Well, where did? I mean, where did he? Where was he birthed? Um. And, and what is he? Let, let, let's so for the listeners that don't know. Because <laughs> yeah, that, that I mean, he's, he's non-gender. You know, he's non-gender. He's non-specific specific to a gender, and he's um. It's even though. He, even though he has, you know, Larry, Laura, I mean, he's got a few names. He's he's all um, of us. Yeah, he, there's a little bit of Larry in everybody. You know, he might have a male name, but he's not. You know, he's not specifically male. Well, it but could be, um, it could be Larry spelled with an I, too. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that. That's new. See, yeah. see what happens? Just the creativity is just flowing. No, um, it it spawned like off my first show, which was uh, Pop Stars and Cokeheads, which was like a series of these pop soda cans that I painted, and I kept drawing like this like character with a chip tooth. And um, the chip tooth was like from this um, near death experience that I had where like I thought 
you know, I could have lost it all basically on a, on a serious note and like woke up with a chipped tooth. And like that was like the symbol of like imperfection and near death and just like a, a, re a reoccurring reminder that like, yo, life isn't perfect, you know, keep your head on straight. And that's like why the, the chipped tooth is like so, um, I've seen in so much of my work, but um, the character, I mean, like, I, I don't know. I've just, I've always been a big fan of like that color blue. I mean, even like dating back to like my old, old work, like as a teen, like, you know, I was looking at some stuff, you know, going back to the mom's attic, like from high school and like right after my teenage years where I would draw, like, you know, I would always use blue and I'd always like write the word blue. And so something about like that cyan color, like I think yeah. it's like a very soothing color. Um, when I was younger, I'm like, my art was like super dark. So I think like when I, when I got older, it kind of, it kind of like, I, I strive to like use brighter colors and like a lot of these characters that are smiling. Cause like, I am like a generally like happy, positive dude, yeah. but for some reason, like, I guess when I was growing up, like I used to only draw and paint when I was like, you know, in my house, in my room. Yeah. Like it was like, it was more just like, you know, girls had diaries to write in and, and guys have like, you know, how do you express yourself if you're depressed or if you're in a bad mood or you got things on your mind that you don't know how to talk to somebody about. So I think like when I was younger, I was channeling a lot of art that way. And then that's why I strove, like did like was striving so much to use more color once I got older, because I wanted to like use art in more of a positive fashion and like, you know, show, um, you know, like that's why all these characters are always smiling and they're usually happy. And, Cause that's, that's, you know, that's where I am right now. So, um, it's kind of, it's more of like, I channel a lot of feelings and emotion and energy and things like that into my work. And, um, Do you know, there is still like a little bit of a sinister side of it. If you look in, into some of like the ink drawings and, and things like that and a lot of like chaos and stuff, but, um, the colors, yeah, the colors hopefully add to the more positive side of things. So for anyone that hasn't seen it, can you kind of describe it's a it's a consistent character that shows up in in a lot of your work and it's and you go and it's this loud mouth character regardless of of what Yeah, I mean he's he's typically usually got like eight teeth. Sometimes he's got fangs if he's feeling a little evil. I see him on the Snapchat logo. You got him on you know, he's he's yeah. riding a right he's like part wolf in this one here. <laughs> He's on bowling yeah, I mean, games. it's just literally it's like a, a character that I try to live vicariously through. And now it's kind of grown into something that's like bigger than me, which is dope, where it's like, you know, we do contests with, you know, collectors and, and people that follow the work. And, you know, they're able to be involved in the project where, you know, it's like the whole loud mouth says thing. Like, I, it's, I just want it to be a bigger voice than, than me. And yeah. Um, you know, I started like incorporating like a lot of like some of the phrases that different people have submitted into some of my work to make it more of like just like a collaborative project on a larger level. So it's more just like I look at it like this is just like, a, you know, a character that, that, that um, a character that's able to communicate certain things during our time period. You know? Did you did you want to make something like that consciously? Like no, to, to add no. to your personal brand or is that he just kind of keeps popping up for you? I mean, the one thing about like my art is like I've always strived to just like let it grow. You know, like I think you you can't like overthink it and plan something like that out. Yeah. Like it just kind of starts and molds and evolves and you keep some shit that works and some things that don't. And, you know, it kind of grows and develops and you know it's kind of cool as a character it's like you know comparable to like humans and how they grow and they develop and you know i'd love to see where this character is going to end up when i'm 60 and what he's going to look like because yeah. he's constantly developing and changing with the times and his voice is changing and um, Spe speaking of his voice what what would he want to say to our listeners right now if he had if he had one message for for the people that are listening um Live life loud. Live life loud. I, I f with that. And, and that was actually a new new submission that was dropped, like recently. With one of the loud mouth says contest. So it's cool. Yeah. It's cool, man. Well, well, I feel that very fitting with Larry Loudmouth. You, know? it, I, you, you it, take that another a number of ways. And, and he too, you know, just kind of like if if you just check into your Instagram right now, or like you know, 
wherever else you can you find your stuff you can it is like an ongoing story you know it's like the story of this character that you can just scroll down it's like you're looking at like a like a picture book of this this person's life and and i think it'll be hilarious to see where the hell he's at at the age of 60 um (laughs) now yeah i mean hopefully it's one of those things that lives on you know and when i'm gone my kids are you know keeping larry alive yeah yeah, they'll they'll make their i mean that's right of of larry (laughs) because you know that's what's cool about art is like you know especially you know it's like it lives longer than than any of us so it's like you got to create as much work as you can on this planet because you know they can out, it can outlast all of us you know like there's, you see people going to museums now looking at paintings from how long ago you know and there's stories behind it and it talks about the time and place and what was happening so it's cool we've talked a little bit about like your your social media instagram presence how how do you think that's affected uh modern day art um social media and for for one one way for the positive and one way for the negative um if if there's either yeah i mean positive i guess it's interesting for like a gallery perspective too you know because like a lot of artists are now connected directly with their collectors and fans um in the past you know a lot of artists didn't have that relationship and weren't able to communicate um and weren't able to like sell work or or um, show work to that many people that easily um, you know, you used to you used to have to go to a traditional gallery to to gain access to a certain world of collectors. But now we're in the age where your work is seen by more people um, by putting a photo online versus putting art in a traditional gallery. Because mm-hmm. if you think about the amount of people that walk into a gallery space to see a show, um, you know, it doesn't even compare to the amount of people that could see something online. So, I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's changing. I mean, obviously nothing will beat seeing things in the physical flesh, but it's, it's definitely changing the game. Um, and you know, people are adapting. Uh, so I think it's good for artists. Um, I think it's tough for galleries. Um, I think, uh, I think there is a lot like with the internet and like things spreading so quickly, like people get over things fast, like, and don't appreciate you know, artists might spend yeah. uh, 12 months to a year or two years working on a body of work. And once that lives online and once people see it, like next week, they're like, yeah, that's cool. What's up? What do you got next? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I'm over that. Get you know, over, whereas yeah. like in the past, like, you know, there it, things weren't coming out that fast. So like people enjoyed things for a longer period of time. Um. So that that's what I think it's definitely weird about. It. And there's just, you know, there's so much more with the internet now out there. So many more artists, so many people yeah. like ripping people off and, you know, just trying to like get ahead. And, you know, like there's like a lack of originality and, you know, people just trying to get fame, you know. Yeah. Now, so. uh, the, the one thing that the, the, I saw the Heineken – the Heineken work that you guys did. And I thought they were pretty badass because by looking at them, I was like, I can't get that full experience from Instagram. You know, where like some of the pictures, like, you, you know, you, you have a good idea, but like you have like a, this like pyramid type. Yeah. What, 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 what would you call that? And what was that project? The the Heineken pyramid? Art pyramid? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that was um, just a structure that, uh, we envisioned here at ABV. Like, ABV, what does that stand for real fast? stands for a better view. Uh, it's also uh, the abbreviation for abbreviation. So <laughs> 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 that's uh, what we're talking about. <laughs> it's, it's, all, about. <laughs> it's also yeah, short for above. So, I mean, ABV means a better view. So, yeah. you know, we're on a constant quest to rise above and, and outdo ourselves better than what we did the last time so it's like it could mean a voider vision there you go <laughs> yeah we've got we've got so many different acronyms and, and sayings yeah, yeah, yeah um but yeah that was that was that was a project for your, that your agency abv yeah and it was like you know one of those things that we just envisioned and brought to life and it's we've traveled now it's been on the beach during art basil and luckily you know we got brands that that stand behind what we do and respect the creativity and the passion like Heineken who 
we can pitch a crazy idea like, hey, let's build a 35 foot tall pyramid and have 12 artists painting on it and have four entrances and, you know, and bring it, you know, across the U.S. And they're like, that sounds incredible. Let's do it. It's brilliant. And so, I mean, we love doing stuff like that. And as much as I love painting and there's something about like, you know, going back to that, seeing things and experiencing things in 3D, like, you know, like just paint, I wouldn't be satisfied just painting on a a canvas, you know, or doing a mural. Like there's something about like coming up with an idea and making something that's 3D that you can interact with and experience and um, that's like enjoyable. I mean, literally there's, there's layers to that. There's, it's experiential. I'm looking at it. I, I know that it was it probably so much cooler to actually be there with that as it, as it was happening. So like I can't like if you're on the beach, you can't walk by that without without you know <laughs> going up and taking a peek. Yeah, for how, sure. How and that's the come point. Up with that? Is that you know is that like the whole squad sort of coming together? Like yeah, I mean everybody plays a, a inner like an important role in something like that. You know like. Ash, who's you know doing the renderings, and, and Tommy, who's laying out all the the design work and the, and the illustrator stuff, and you know the the cura- the curation that goes into picking the artists and the management, and project management, and um, you know everybody plays a part to make a project like that come to life. Yeah. And, um, obviously, the whole fabrication team and like people on site building it, like um, you know, there's every everybody without like each individual part the whole thing would not come together yeah so. when someone sees it it's just it's just knowing that it can happen right it might give them that little nudge you know you don't, they don't yeah. need to know exactly how or why but that little nudge is, is everything man um, yeah no i mean you just gotta you gotta take you gotta take the risk that's the biggest thing is just take a chance and you're gonna fail have multiple you, times have you, you know ever what caught I mean? flack like, for like, you know, I, I'm more so when you were like probably 15 to like 20 figuring it out. Was there any anyone that like, any, any anything, anything that you remember where you were like, man, like maybe this isn't that cool, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> like maybe this isn't for me, you know, was there any standout moment that was, that there was resistance there? Um, yeah, I mean, you're always like, I think everybody has points in their career where they're like, maybe I should just get a nine to five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you snap out of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then you drink a Heineken. And then you... Yeah. No. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I had, you know, I had businesses that I started in college that, you know, I'm obviously not working on and, anymore. And um, they were great learning experiences. I mean, I'm, I mean, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now if I hadn't gone through that, you know. Yeah. Um, it, so, I mean, there was, yeah, I mean, there was probably a good five or six years where I was just figuring it out. And then, um, you know, those things didn't pan out like um, for the long term, you know, for my, my long term goals. And then I had to kind of, you know, go my own way and, and do my own thing. But yeah. if they didn't go as planned, then I probably wouldn't be happy. So sometimes that stuff's a blessing in disguise, you know, uh-huh. you know. Um, now we're, we're at about, um, you want to probably wrap this up in the next five to 10 minutes. So I'll, I'll do a couple more like rapid fire style questions. You cool with that? Yeah, let's do it. Um, the, the favorite that you're actually, you know, what? let's get into this. Cause we, we, we touched upon it when you're working, right? What, th- what three artists are your go-to artists to get you in that, that creative mode when you're listening to your headphones? Ooh, three, three musicians. Um, I mean, Outcast for sure, just because Atlanta, you know, so much history. Uh-huh. Um, who else? Uh, damn, man, I listen to so much music, and like the more and more digital we get, like the more all over the place I am. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, let's let's say your la- the last three songs that you played then. Um, was that Yo Gotti song? Down in the DM. Yeah, I had to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's so ridiculous. <laughs> I got I got two phones. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. Some trap some trap stuff. Um, uh, no, is, I, that, is that Rick Ross? <laughs> I don't think so. No. So you listen to some like 
Uh, I'll listen to a little bit of trap. I'll listen to some like tropical house, like Thomas Jack. Like if I'm trying to get on like my island vibe. Yeah. You know, and try to imagine that I'm in like the BVIs on a yacht um, and relax. But um, yeah, I mean, usually it's a mix. Like Mondays, I'm usually pretty grumpy because the weekend's over, and I like to listen to something chill in the studio. Some happy, some happy tunes, like some classics, uh, classic rock and roll, and then like as the week progresses, the music progresses. Did did, did Kanye do do Picasso justice? Oh man, I can't comment on Kanye. <laughs> That's all Kanye wants is us to talk about Kanye. No, no, no. no. I, yeah, I was I was more strictly talking about the 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 work. I I I I absolutely don't want to get into. Anything, anything extracurricular <laughs> about, about Ye. I yeah. I want to know about like the, the actual the project, the body of work that he made. Do, do you f with it? Um, honestly, I haven't had a chance to like sit down and listen to the whole thing. Yeah, I, I streamed a few things here and there. I noticed it wasn't available on Spotify, so I wasn't <laughs> able to, to access it. Yeah, he makes us jump through all these hoops just to get it. Like, he really wants to know if we want this shit. <laughs> yeah, um, I think he's got more tricks up his sleeve. Oh, yeah, he's, definitely. He, he's smarter than that, I hope. He, he, I, I think everything that he's doing is part of his – you're right. It's yeah, part of his yeah. ploy that, that people talk. Like, he, he yeah. he's got people by the strings right now. He's like, oh, you yeah. talk about me if I do this? Boom, I'll do it some more. <laughs> Exactly. He's a smart man. Yeah, he's a smart dude. I yeah, he, I don't know. Whatever. But uh, all right, all right. So I'm I'm gonna bang these out. Uh, what, what's the what's the longest amount of time you've spent working on a project, start to finish? Uh, probably a year and a half. That was like my first solo show, and that was you know just just from con like conception to completion. So your first solo show. Is there anywhere that um people can be directed to see that on on the, um, is that is there a name for that? Yeah, it was just pop stars and cokeheads. It was like the first show that I did. Yeah. What's your superpower? Superpower? Yeah. Positivity. I love it. What? Well, well, who's a non-famous person who deserves a documentary about them that's in your life, and why? Non-famous person. Since you know all those famous people. Yeah. Um. That Someone. deserves a documentary. That's that's a like. Where's the documentary gonna go? Uh, you can pick the network, man. It could go to uh, <laughs> it could go to uh, HGTV. It could go to uh, the 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 Travel Channel, whatever. Um, pro I mean, I would have to say my my pops, just because he's like been a big inspiration. And I think what he does is pretty rad, and he's he kind of influenced what I do, you know. So he was down from the from the from the gate with with your uh, direction. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a big supporter of the arts, and um, he's in the scenic business. So they build a lot of Broadway stuff, which is you know I was lucky enough to be grow up around that stuff and and see that stuff being built, which I think is kind of may, maybe one of the main reasons like seeing installations like that pyramid and stuff come to life are are cool. That's awesome. Um, behind the scene, behind the scenes stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah I, I would love to see. Uh, 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 <laughs> yo, yo, I'm, I'm embarrassed to ask this. What the heck is your last name? <laughs> is it Mike? Wait, it's not Mike. No, no, no. That's my first and middle name. Dude, do you want? Is that even something you want to be public or? No, I, I don't exist on the internet. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. That man. way, if anything ever happens, you know, I could just disappear. Yeah, why do you think I'm Boyder and Boyder Daggy? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. You know, this digital world. You gotta. You have to become a. Uh, you know. You never know. You never know when you gotta go and just yeah, disappear. Yeah, you never know when you just gotta er click a race forever. <laughs> Um, what, what's a philosophy or like a like a like a thought on life that others may find strange about you that you have? Um, like an outlook that may you know the a majority of the wor world would think is is a little interesting. That's a tough question. Yeah, I know. Um, um, I'm Tommy. Tough questions over here. I don't know, I definitely should have read that email you sent over. <laughs> too busy, man. <laughs> too busy. Too busy. Oh man. Um I don't I don't know, man. You stumped me on this one. All right, well, you know what? 
I'll, I'll, di I'll dig into the, the, the crates of actually our, our, our friendship relationship. I remember, I forget what it was. I, I have no idea actually what we were talking about. But when I hung up the phone, or no, right before I hung up the phone, you were like, Boyder, just do it. We're not getting any younger. And I have no idea what we were talking about. <laughs> but, but like, I honestly, I use that. I use that yeah. for so many situations. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I'll, I've honestly probably said it over a thousand times since that. It was probably like four or five years ago. And not, maybe not a thousand. Maybe I'm stretching. But maybe I've said it in my head a thousand times. You know what? Like, we're not getting any younger. Like, it, it just, just make moves. Yeah, now or never. And react. I mean, yeah. No, that's the truth. I mean, I don't think people would find that that strange. Nah, I think that's nah, what, nah, nah, that's nah, what nah. threw me off about your question. It's like something I would say that people think is strange. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't actually a good example, but that was just still something that I, I <laughs> No, I agree, though. Yeah, I mean, you got to – now or never, you know, yeah. make it happen. We're not like, getting any younger. It's true. Um, is there any uh, particular book that you gift to others or that you, you, you'll, you'll recommend to others? Yeah, I mean, I'm like, I'm a big fan of like all those, any motivation books or, um, you know, there's a lot of good ones out there. You're, um, you're into Napoleon, Napoleon Hill, right? Yeah, of course, of course. Could see, believe, achieve, right? He's, yeah. he's the, he's, he's the, the man goat. behind that. He's yeah. The, he's the goat. Is there a, is there like a particular one that you want to shout out or, or maybe even like narrow it down to a particular chapter of a book that like resonated for you? Um, Hmm. In terms of like books, let me see. You can dig. You can dig. You got a Kindle there or something. You got like yeah, yeah. Give me a second here. All right, cool, cool. I'll hang out. I'll, I'll look at my tennis rackets. <laughs> <laughs> you check out your tennis racket collection. <laughs> I got I got two bomb tennis rackets left for real. Vintage or or vintage, those like some vintage? Yeah, they're hanging on my wall. I, I used them for a, a music video a couple years ago, but like. They, they turn out to be great, great pieces of art. I actually, that might be my thing. I might like repurpose and like tennis rackets and make faces out of them. And like, I actually saw somebody the other day that um, was like crocheting into tennis rackets. Like they used the the weave of yeah. the you know the racket as like a crochet and like weave some crazy art designs in wow. them. I wish I knew the artist's name it's so bad. I'm just they're trying to steal my flows. But. <laughs> In terms of books, books yeah, books, books. Um, Scott Belsky's "Making Ideas Happen." Word, that's a good one. He's the founder of uh, Behance. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, dude, I'm, I love those books. Like anything that's going to get me motivated or, or teach me something, I don't know. And you know, a lot of those you got to read like multiple times because, like, to make them s stick. Yeah, I agree. I, there's there's certain, there's certain rich dad, poor dad. I mean, all there's a there's a you know classics. Yeah. You you want I want to tell you something weird that I've done. It's not really like an attitude on life that I think people will will like think I'm interesting. It's just like a something I did that is a little off. Um so there's this book uh um what's it called? The The World's Greatest Salesman. Have you ever heard of that one? No. It's it's pretty badass. It's the story of this like this kid who um is kind of like confused in his life and then he like leads this path and he and he finds these like eight scrolls. So it's like a fictional story tied in with like a non-fictional story. So once he finds these scrolls, it teaches him like these like eight eight principles of life to on how to approach it to to become the greatest salesman in the world. So when he talk when they say salesman, they talk about like products and like, you know, I I apply I don't really know, I'm not like a salesman, but I apply it just just to, you know, my the creation of anything. Um, or, you know, you sold me on this podcast. Yeah. So, so the, the first, the first <laughs> principle, right. Is, is, is greeting the world with love in your heart. And I'm telling yeah. you when I read this, like this first one, I, I've never, I have never been more moved by like, like a chapter in a book than by this one. Like it, once you, once you read it, you're like lighter. It's It's about just greeting the world with like compassion and love. And, and so, um, you know, the mornings I wake up and I'm like on the move and sometimes I don't have time to reread it and I, I try to prime my day by reading it every day. So I actually made my own audio version of it. I like I read it out loud to myself and, and like and I play it back every morning and I and, it, and it's fantastic. I love that. It's fantastic. I'll send it to you. When That's we're a done. great idea. Yeah, send it to me. 
I'll send it to you. I, I'll, I, I would love to hear that. See, that that's that's an interesting thing. I need to pick up that habit and just jam that on the way to the studio in the morning. <laughs> jam out the with my Mickey Mouse gloves on. To, with Mickey Mouse to <laughs> to, to, to Blitter vocals. Uh, now, uh, what what's one message that you want to leave with our listeners? Work hard, stay humble. And if and if you were doing this interview, what would you ask Greg Mike? What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> and what nah. would your answer be? Um, everybody's a little bit strange and weird. Some people just hide it better than others. I love it. And uh, and where can people find you? Where, where are we going to send them? You can find me in my studio. Uh, and, and if you're not at the studio or there, you'll be exactly. lurking around some random yeah, building to figure in, out. in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. With your girlfriend shielding her eyes, pretending like she doesn't know you. And like, she's the one with the secrets, and and she's you know she's the the real talent. So I'm just yeah. a ve- I'm just a vehicle, you know. Well, that'll be podcast too. <laughs> right on, man. Yo, keep uh keep blessing the world with with your creations, man. And uh, it's been a pleasure having you on this, and a pleasure knowing you as a human. Thank you. Thank you, Border Man. Awesome, appreciate it, bro. What's up, my friend? Thank you for hanging with us for this podcast. That was Greg Mike. If you want to check him out, the man with two first names, it's Greg Mike on Instagram. Greg Mike, that simple. You can find a lot of the stuff we were talking about. If you have any um, feedback for the podcast, Tom at Boyder.co, send it out to me. Um, I'd love to get the conversation going as we're continuing to build, build this theme out. And we got some fun goals for future guests in the next couple months. So I'll, I'll hit you with those details too when you do read reach out to me and um hey have a beautiful day oh and greg actually just texted me some some new books uh some books that he left out of the podcast so i'll put them in the show notes at boyder.co or you can just click the details in the itunes link or the soundcloud link and find them there so uh, if you want to find those books he sent me about four or five here i'll put the links in the show notes and that's boyder.co all right Have a beautiful day and keep doing you.